Hello and welcome. We're in module three of the CHS training for quality and accountability focal points. We're looking at what you need to know on each commitment of the CHS in order to support your organization's implementation of these commitments. In this presentation, we're going to look at commitment four. Commitment four of the core humanitarian standard states that communities and people affected by crisis know their rights and entitlements, have access to information and participate in decisions that affect them. The quality criterion is that humanitarian response is based on communication, participation and feedback. This commitment emphasizes the need for the inclusive participation of crisis affected people. Information and communication are critical forms of aid that affected people need in order to make the best decisions for themselves and their communities, as well as to hold organisations to account. When people have the opportunity to voice their opinions, they are better able to adapt to the challenges they face and better able to take an active role in their recovery. Let's take a closer look at the key actions for Commitment 4. Key Action 4.1 states that organisations should provide information to communities and people affected by crisis about the organisation, the principles it adheres to, how it expects its staff to behave, the programmes it is implementing and what they intend to deliver. Information sharing needs to be planned as part of the programme activities, including sharing information on expected staff behaviour. There is a prevention of sexual exploitation and abuse and harassment requirement to fulfil this indicator. The requirement is that information provided to communities needs to cover the organisation's commitment and expected staff behaviour in relation to PSEAH. It is important that the organisation's commitments and expected staff behaviour related to PSEAH is communicated to affected people in ways that are contextualised, accessible and appropriate. The organisation needs to monitor that the information shared is also understood by affected people and take action if that's not the case. Indicator 4.2 states that organisations should communicate in languages, formats and media that are easily understood, respectful and culturally appropriate for different members of the community, especially vulnerable and marginalised groups. Key Action 4.3 states that organisations should ensure representation is inclusive, involving the participation and engagement of communities and people affected by crisis at all stages of the work. An assessment exercise would seek to understand how people's views, including the most vulnerable and marginalised, are sought and used to guide programme design and implementation. It would also seek to understand how your organisation ensures that all groups within affected communities feel they have equitable and safe opportunities to participate in programme decisions. Key Action 4.4 states that organisations should encourage and facilitate communities and people affected by crisis to provide feedback on their level of satisfaction with the quality and effectiveness of the assistance received paying particular attention to the gender, age and diversity of those giving feedback. Here, an assessment would look at how staff are encouraged to seek feedback, how they ensure that all groups, especially vulnerable and marginalised people, are aware of and have access to feedback channels and feel safe using those channels. They also look at how barriers to give feedback are identified and addressed. Feedback mechanisms need to be planned and budgeted as part of the programme and when possible, feedback data needs to be disaggregated by age, gender and other relevant categories. Thinking about your role as a CHS focal point, supporting the implementation of the CHS, what types of things might your field teams be doing if they were fulfilling these indicators under Commitment 4? Examples of these could include having information sharing plans as part of the programme activities, making sure that PSEAH is contextualised in these, and making sure information materials such as posters and flyers are easily understood and are respectful. It could be about ensuring that feedback and response mechanisms are in place, keeping reports on these, checking that information is understood, particularly about PSEAH. 
It is important to note here that by feedback, we mean ensuring that those affected by crisis are engaged and able to participate in all aspects of humanitarian response from the very beginning, including what kind of complaints and feedback mechanisms to put into place. Other examples of activities include conducting satisfaction surveys and getting consent to use images. Do you already take these actions in communities? If not, there might be examples on this slide that become part of your CHS implementation or improvement plan. Let's take a look at the organisational responsibilities for Commitment 4. 4.5. Policies for information sharing are in place and promote a culture of open communication. There is a PSEAH requirement to fulfil this indicator. The organisation needs to have an information sharing policy that addresses PSEAH. The policy must be in place and monitored. 4.6. Policies are in place for engaging communities and people affected by crisis, reflecting the priorities and risks they identify in all stages of the work. 4.7. External communications, including those used for fundraising purposes, are accurate, ethical and respectful, presenting communities and people affected by crisis as dignified human beings. On this slide, you'll see some examples of policies and guidance that support Commitment 4. They include information sharing policies or guidance that specify information relating to PSEAH, guidelines and templates for information sharing, policies on community engagement and or accountability to beneficiaries, participation handbooks, ethical fundraising policies and external communication policies. Does your organisation have these in place? If not, there might be an example on this slide that becomes part of your CHS improvement plan. When looking at organisational responsibilities, you need to look at what sits organisation wide and what is specific to a certain context or roles. A policy that requires information sharing about PSEAH will be applicable to all programmes and all staff to ensure communities and people affected by crisis are informed and protected everywhere. Aspects of ethical fundraising policies may only be relevant for head offices that design campaigns and fundraising communications. At the community level, your organisation's staff will be required to know different aspects of that policy. For example, photographic requirements to get consent from people and to present subjects ethically and with dignity. Fundraising and campaign organisers will need to ensure campaigns are accurate and that data is protected and used legally. Also, take some time to consider the following. Is there a culture of open communication and information sharing in your organisation? Are communities genuinely engaged and at the heart of the way the teams plan, implements and monitors their programmes? Are the community's con concerns and priorities reflected in all stages of your organisation's work? If there is room to improve, this requires a different solution than filling a policy gap. This requires organisational change at the leadership level. For Key Action 4.1, communities are asked if they feel informed about the services available to them. For Key Action 4.2, communities are asked if the information they receive is clear enough. If the answer is negative, it is important to ask follow-up questions in order to gather information to help the organisation learn and improve. One example of a follow-up question is, what type of information would you need? Possibly prompt with suggestions such as, how are beneficiaries selected? When and where the project activities take place? Information on the staff of the organisation? Information on the organisation itself? And information on funding? Another follow-up question is, in what way would you like to receive information? Suggested options can include community meetings, community leaders, SMS and posters. And finally, another important follow-up question is whether there are obstacles to accessing information. For Key Action 4.3, communities are asked if they feel their views are taken into account in decisions made about services provided. If the answer is negative, they should be asked if they would like to participate more, how and whether there are obstacles to their participation. 
Use the community survey to find out how the organisation is performing now and to suggest specific ways to improve on Commitment 4 in the future. This is the end of the CHS Commitment 4 presentation. As a reminder, Commitment 4 states that communities and people affected by crisis know their rights and entitlements, have access to information and participate in decisions that affect them. Take some time now to reflect on this commitment and, when you're ready, move on to the next commitment presentation.